Good evening. My name is Dan Gerard. I'm the commander of District 3, and it is my very great honor and privilege to welcome you here to the opening of District 3 on behalf of all the men and women, the 170 officers that are assigned there. As everyone knows, thank you. When you get 300 citizens to attend a ribbon cutting for a government building, it's a special building. I've never seen so many contractors that were involved in the project show up. They all said, I really took pride in this one and that felt amazing because we felt the same way. This doesn't look like a police station. It's beautiful inside and out. LED lights change colors on columns that represent the 14 West Side neighborhoods served by District 3 police. There are photos and stories. Inside, District 3's open plan layout has tons of natural light and a community room for neighborhood meetings. It is phenomenal. I was just in a meeting two days ago at the old District 3, and to think that this is what they're coming to and what they're going it, it'll be amazing for all the communities for sure. I just love it. I love that everybody loved it. I was outside and I'm waiting for it. I heard everybody comments. They were talking about how beautiful the building is, the outside, and they couldn't wait to get on the inside. It's outstanding. We, we still haven't toured completely yet. You can't see the building's best feature, energy efficiency. LEAD, or Leadership in Energy and Environmental Design, is the worldwide standard for green building certification. The new District 3 is the City of Cincinnati's first LEED Platinum building. That's amazing. There are very few facilities that, that meet that, certainly in the public sector. Cincinnati values energy efficiency. The city has the most progressive tax break in the country for private owners who build green. Now the city wants bragging rights for this, building the first police station in the country to achieve net zero energy. If you're just looking at pure police stations, right now we're tracking that this will be the first net zero energy in the country. Um, that's pretty cool. A police station is a very hard building to make net zero energy because it's in use 24 seven. So you don't get to turn anything off at night. You don't get to shut down the HVAC system at night or do setbacks. The first step is to understand what net zero energy is. And so it doesn't mean that there's no energy. It doesn't mean that it's off the grid. It means that throughout the full year, you're producing as much energy on site as you're consuming. District three can produce energy with 1200 solar panels on the rooftop. But the first step is conservation. Before you do any of the bigger ticket items to reach the LEED Platinum, you have to do the basic steps, which is looking at the orientation of the building, making sure it's sited properly relative to the sun. We did massing studies on the building to find the best use of the site. From there, we made the building envelope as tight as possible. District 3 has super insulated, bulletproof concrete walls. The precast composite wall system integrates four inches of concrete, four inches of insulation, and four inches of exterior concrete. Every crack is sealed, then sprayed with foam insulation. The city's third-party commissioning agent made site visits. Just make sure we get all that sealed up prior to the test, I think we'll be good. Third-party verification is required for all lead buildings. We are going to put an apparatus on the, on the building and pressurize it and depressurize it and actually measure the amount of leakage coming in and out of the building. After conservation comes efficiency. District 3 is efficient with natural light flooding in through windows that surround the two-story center atrium. LED lights throughout the building activate only when needed. Under the back parking lot are 40 geothermal wells, 400 feet deep. The geothermal enters the building right here. Pipes bring water into the building at the Earth's constant temperature of 55 degrees to supply multiple heat pumps. Because of the 29 heat pumps throughout the building, there are basically 29 zones within the building, which provides better comfort for the users of the building. I remember 
ice on the inside of my windows in my office in the other district. And you're like, really? Are you kidding me? I have ice on the inside of my windows? Okay. Right, I don't have to sit in my office and wear a coat anymore, which is what I used to have to do. So, no, this is absolutely great. And people realize it's going to be cool in the summer and warm in the winter, and they don't need all that stuff. But once you're able to squeeze every watt that you can out of the building, then it's time to put in the renewables. And in our area, solar is really the most efficient um, renewable technology. The solar panels increase the construction budget by $900,000, but will pay off in the long run. When we looked at the utility savings over time and calculated the value of the utility savings, it turned out to be better to stretch a little on the construction costs and avoid those utility payments forever. The Net Zero Energy certification comes after the building's been open a year and utility bills prove the building makes as much energy as it uses. What we were expecting each month. City officials are monitoring those bills. The old District 3 building's utilities ran up to $6,000 a month. The new District 3 is twice the size with much lower utilities. Bills so far show it has made more energy than it used about half the time the month shown in red and the city got energy credits. We're on track to exceed our expectations. Here in Cincinnati, to do a sustainability project, it has to make economic sense. We don't have money to spend chasing green just for the sake of green. The city now uses District 3 as a teaching tool, giving presentations and tours of the building. Those who've come by include corporate sustainability leaders, CEOs, and regular citizens. What do you think about people touring your building? Oh, it's good. If Cincinnati sustainability leadership is a bit of a surprise, it's also an inspiration. Here we are in Cincinnati, we're in Ohio, we're in coal country. Right? So if we can do it here, anybody anywhere can do it.